All righty, let's go ahead. Let's jump in here. Let's get to Hebrews 11, 6. I think we were trying to work on this. Some, we got a couple, of, you know, we had some interruptions and, and stuff going on with us going to Tulsa and everything. So uh, let's talk about the faith that pleases God. All right. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. They that come to, come to God must believe that he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I think we kind of started on this. We just kind of got hung up right there about diligence and there's effort and the stuff. And never got out of there. And so we're going to get out of there tonight. All right. All right. So, but, you know, the lifestyle of faith is what pleases God. Without it, you cannot please God. Amen. Now, it doesn't mean God doesn't love you, but you don't please him. See, some people get that confused. They don't understand that you can... Be loved of God and not please God. Okay? My kids do stuff to, sometimes that don't please me, but we still love them. All right? So, the word translated please here uh, in Hebrews eleven six is a derivative of another Greek word, which means to agree. So then without faith, it's impossible to agree with God. God will not agree with doubt, fear, fret, or worry. He will only accept faith as a term for agreement. Now, Webster gives the definition of agreement as to be of one mind. Now, since faith is a force of the spirit, then in spiritual terms, it is to be of one spirit. In other words, you're in agreement in, in the realm of the spirit. Thus, pleasing God or agreeing with God is being of one spirit. The arena of agreement is the written word that is made real to us. There will never be an arena of agreement that is outside the parameters of the spirit of the word. Amen. God says in his word, I mean, just, just with the culture we're in today, let's just go ahead and say it because everybody's trying to be, well, you know, God loves everybody. Homosexuality is a sin. God's not going to come along and agree with you that it's okay for you to be homosexual. It don't work that way. Okay. We come up to his standard. He doesn't come down to ours. He became what we were to reconcile us so we could be what he is. Amen. There was that identification was he became what we were and paid the price for our sin and failure. So he could bring us up to living as he is. As he is, so are we in this world. And so, God, you, if you're going to walk in pleasure or in agreement with God, it's going to be in accordance with his word. You can't get around that, and you can't circumvent that or pick and choose. You know, God, God's not golden corral. All you can eat whatever you want to eat, buffet bar, okay? You got wings over here, you got steak over there, you got, you know, uh, whatever else they put on that, that thing, um, which you may or may not want to eat. I don't know. You know, sometimes all you can eat buffet bars are kind of like, nah, anyway, Hallelujah. And nobody's enjoying in there with me. John 6, 63, the Bible tells, uh, the word says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. And everybody said, the flesh profits nothing. So what does that mean? We always want to be striving to walk in accordance with the, the spirit. And remember the Bible says, and, and John, John wrote this and said this in his epistles, that the word and the spirit agree. So if you're walking in the Spirit, well, I, I got the Holy Ghost on that. Well, if you got the Holy Ghost on it, you're going to have written word on it. At least in, con, at least in a concept. In other words, you may not have written word on God wanting you to have a, a, a B, BMW Z4. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be blessed. Okay? So if, if the Spirit of God says, you know, you're going, to get, you're going to get a particular car or whatever, I'm just using that as an example then that is in spirit or line with his word. But now, for, for the Spirit of God to come on and say, you're going to have so-and-so's wife, that's not in line with his word because God hates divorce. And so if you look on another woman and lust after her, you committed adultery already. So, you know, you can't, so it's going to have to be in either specifically written, and there are things that are in there, you know, healing, salvation, baptism, Holy Spirit, uh, giving, and you're receiving in, in accordance with so forth and so on. Then there are other things that will be in line with and are in harmony with the spirit of the word, such as prosperity in a general sense, and not uh, what the Bible doesn't give uh, specifics. 
you know, that you're going to have this kind of car. What about Bible doesn't give you that? All right? He will, you know, he finds a wife, finds a good thing. See, that's in the spirit of the word to get, have a wife. Have someone else's wife is not in the spirit of the word. Amen. All right. So, it is a spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. How much does the flesh profit you? Nada. Nil. You, you, it's just not going to profit you. In other words, as a believer, it needs to be birthed from the spirit rather than the flesh. And, uh, you know, people tell you stuff, I hear people say stuff all the time. <clears throat> they, they get these revelations, and really when you, when you analyze their revelation, it's simply their flesh is talking, and they, proceed, and they said it was the spirit, you know. And I could go and I could say some stuff that people have told me in the past, and you just kind of go, God didn't tell you that. You know, I asked some people come saying, God said, I'm, I'm only supposed to do this this way. And I'm thinking, no, ain't no way God told you to do that. Your flesh told you, and you, and you blamed it on God. Well, see, number one, if it is your flesh, and you're trying to say it's God, there's no faith there to bring it to pass. Why? The flesh profits nothing. Faith is born out of uh, harmony uh, the, uh, by the word or in harmony with the word. Amen. And he says this, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So that means they're not birthed out of fleshly will or desire. And everybody grunt. Can I get a holy grunt? Mm, all right, anyway. That was a holy grunt. We need to stop. Because this is where we get in trouble. See, remember, we're going to come into agreement with God. We come into agreement with God. God does not come into agreement with us. There's a big difference. Are you here? His ways, Isaiah chapter 55, His ways are not our ways. Neither are His thoughts our thoughts, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So what's that mean? If we're going to come into agreement with God, we're going to have to go up to where he is. He's not coming down to where you are in the sense of lowering his standard, changing his word, making it different for your, for your case, giving you outs that nobody else gets. I have I've had people tell me over your stuff, and it's, you know, they have this, this, this unique relationship with the Lord. What do you mean unique? God's always telling them stuff and giving them out that nobody else gets. Well, the Lord showed me this. Well, that's not the Bible. Yeah, but, you know, the Lord showed me this. I was witnessing to a guy one day a number of years ago, when I, uh, even before I went to Ramah, and... Um, he was a factory service guy for a mobile home company I was working for. We were going out to a site where one of our setups where there was a factory problem they had to go in and fix. And I was witnessing to him, sharing about the Lord and, you know, how young Christians are. They get fired up, and, and, and really we should stay fired up. I said we should stay fired up. Amen. All right. That was just, you know, I'm going to pour gasoline on y'all. Y'all should stay fired up. Amen. All right. And... Um, he said, well, I, you know, I've, I've, me and my maker have had a, got a deal. You don't have a deal with your maker. You don't get to cut a deal where, you know, look, right before I pass out of this world, you're going to give me an opportunity right before I draw my last breath to get in, but I'm going to go ahead and live my life like I want to right now. So it, those deals are born out of the flesh. Then you get Christians coming to you and telling you, well, the Lord showed me and, and what they show them is all self-serving, all flesh birthed, all flesh inspired. It's not Bible inspired. It's not in line with the Word of God. And yet they run and tell everybody the Lord showed them that, and the Lord told them that, and the Lord revealed this to them, and the Lord, you know, and me, and me, and you're having some kind of talk with the Lord. You're having a talk with your flesh and blaming it on God. Well, how do you know that? Because all the stuff I hear, these people say these things, are allowing them to stay like they are and allowing them to do stuff to other people that nobody else can do, and you can't even do it to them. Somebody came to them with that same offer, that same concept, or that same statement, they'd about shoot them. 
I mean, they might blow a gasket. You're crazy. Anyway. Hello. Y'all hear you going home? No. If we are going to, if we're going to live in faith and have a faith that pleases God, it's going to be us going up to him. Amen. Now, now, understand, we're talking, you know, you, you, now you, well, I can hear somebody going, but, you know, Dad Hagen said he had to take his faith down. That's, that's different. You're talking about agreement. And you're talking about getting your faith at the same level. I'm talking about God's standards don't change. You can't make deals with God where the standard changes. Are you here? Well, you know what? Um, I'm going to serve you, but I ain't going to church. God don't give you the okay on that. That's all right, son. I wouldn't go there either. <laughs> no, if, it's a, if, it's, if there's something wrong in a church, God wouldn't tell you you can't go, not go to church. He would just tell you, you know, if there's really something wrong and it's not you, it's what's wrong. A lot of times people blame the church for a lot of things. It's really them. Yeah. I would say in the majority, vast majority of cases, when there's an issue like that, it's not the church, it's the person. And that's not, well, oh, 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 oh. it's like a motorboat. We, people, don't, people don't want, they don't want to submit and be, and I'm not talking about the weird stuff. I'm not talking about finding out if you can go on vacation or not. Or if you, you can go get a Krispy Kreme after church or not. That's stupid. But I'm talking about, you know, biblical submission, you know, See, I got people who call me pastor until I have to tell them something they don't want to hear. And then I'm Ed. <laughs> or worse. Well, I was, I was being nicer, you know. All of a sudden, I become Ed. You know, don't like what I had to say. It's Ed when, they, when, when everything's great and they like it. It's I'm pastor. Well, that, that don't work. Are you here? Try that with your boss. Well, as long as you're telling me to do what I want to do, I, you're my boss. As soon as you don't, I'm not, I'm not, you're, you're not my boss. See how long you last doing that in the world? It won't work. You won't even make it at McDonald's doing that. They tell you to flip a burger a certain way, flip it a certain way. All right, now, so what I was trying to say here was, we're not talking about that, you know, in the arena of agreement where people, you know, you can't get somebody to come up in their faith or their faith isn't strong enough, so you come down to where they are. They're, believe, you know, they're still believing God. That's, that's what Brother Hagin was talking about. He said some people's faith isn't high enough to receive fully, so they're believing that God, the doctor's hands be guided skillfully and they'll have a speedy recovery. Well, that's the level of their faith, and if, until you come down to with them on that, you're not in agreement with their faith. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not that God won't meet you at your faith. It's that God doesn't change his standard or his words to allow you to live differently than what his word says. The, the, am I making myself clear here? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You're not, I want to make sure we're, we're, we're clear on that point. Um, you don't get to live a different lifestyle and standard because you cut a special deal with God. Well, I can fornicate. God told me it was all right for me to fornicate. Because, you know, you know we, we had a talk and, you know, it's all right. No, it's not all right. God told me, you know, that it was all right for me to have my neighbor's wife because, you know, he has a special plan for us. That, that we had, used to have this guy in town. Actually, I think he's still around somewhere. Kind of messed up our church at one time. But, you know, he, he'd get up in front of the church and say, now, if you see me and the worship leader here late at night or see us around together in town, boy, you're talking about somebody just giving it away. It's because we have a special, we work, we got a special call in the Spirit. Let me tell you something. There won't nothing about the Spirit that is involved in what they were doing on the couch in his office at 2 o'clock in the morning when he got caught. The, the, the Holy Ghost had nothing to do with that. He got caught by people who used to go to our church. They came to me to tell me, you know, they, they repented for getting all upset with us when he got involved. Yep. They were doing some couch time at 2 o'clock in the morning in his office. In the church. Have you no fear of God? I mean, it looks like, come home. Letting his wife go into diabetic coma is begging him to call 911, and he's telling the woman to use her faith. 
He's hoping she'll die so he can marry the other woman. That went over big. All right. So, all that aside, what we're trying to say is God doesn't change the standards, the requirements. You don't get to get in uh, to heaven on, um, you know, by going, well, you know, I believe in Buddha. And we're all serving the same God, so he's going to let me in because he, my heart's genuine. You know, Jesus made a really interesting statement one day. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. Well, that kind of does away with the everybody can get in their own way thing and they look at Jesus and say, he was just one of the many prophets. He was a good prophet. Good prophets don't lie. Are you here? And if Jesus was lying when he said he's the only way, no man comes to the Father but by him, then he's not a good prophet. You can't have it both ways. Like I tell people, he's either who he said he was or the biggest liar that ever walked the face of the earth. Black or white, there's no gray. There's just no way, there's no work around. Amen. All right. So, here, so we, we counted this. We, God does not come into agreement with us. God has set the word. God has set the standard. God has said how it is. We come into agreement with him. That's faith. God's not going to agree with you that you're defeated. Somebody say hallelujah. Aren't you glad he doesn't? Aren't you glad when you make some bonehead confession, he didn't go, I agree with you. So be it. Come on now. Can you imagine if you said, I'll never make it through the day, and God says, okay, so be it. Aren't you glad he doesn't come into agreement with you? Come on, church. See, God has made a standard of vic to, to, to create victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith, faith, faith 1 John 5, 4. And in order for us to have the victory that overcomes the world, we come into what? We please him and we come into agreement. We come into one spirit with him by coming into agreement with him. And by coming into agreement with him, we are able to receive the victory that is provided out of that arena of agreement. You do not procure victory by God coming down to your pig slop, wallering, mumbling, Mickey Mouse, whiny face self about gloom, despair, and agony on me. For God to come down and come into harmony and agreement with your defeat would, we, would enforce your defeat and not deliver you from it. Amen. Thus, in order to please God or to gain victory, you must come into agreement with God. One, um, one, tra one uh, commentary or uh, study of the word confession, uh, instead of just, you know, to speak, it, it means to say the same thing as. To say the same thing as. See, when we confess the word, we're saying the same thing as what God said. There has to be this in order to please God. A faith that pleases God is coming to the place where we move up to where he says the, set the standard of victory. Now, you can have the defeat, but he's not going to be a party to it. See, there's two standards that have been set. The standard of victory and the standard of defeat. The standard of defeat is governed by the kingdom of darkness, where there's sickness, disease, poverty, calamity, and no victory. And then the, the, the standard of victory has been set by God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, through faith in his word of victory, health, healing, wholeness, salvation. Those are the rounds we can walk in, victory or defeat. Remember God through Joshua said to the nation of Israel, I set before thee this day life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose. Oh, oh, oh. He did not say that he's going to enforce life on you whether you want it or not. 
He's there for us to choose it. How do you choose it? You come into agreement with it. What is coming? Your, in other words, you come to the point you believe that what God says about the matter is more, is more real than what the matter says about the matter. Yeah. What God says about the circumstance is more real than what the circumstance says about the circumstance. Yeah. See, you can already envision and express in words or, act, or thought or demonstration where you are. That doesn't bring you out of where you are. Coming into agreement where God says you should be or could be or can be is what will take you out of where you are into what God says you're supposed to be. We come into agreement. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No faith is produced by listening to the enemy. <clears throat> no faith, you know, people, people just uh, encourage people when they're going through a tough time of how God has a reason for it. And they wonder why they don't get delivered. It's hard to come out of what you believe is what you're supposed to be in. Did I get too fandangled there for you? If you believe that God has given you cancer or Alzheimer's or this or that or put you in this tough place or dragging you through the mud and, through, and, and just, I mean, just drowning you in all this, the, these, these problems and all that kind of stuff, how can you believe to get out of them if you believe God's got you there? And what people call a lot of times faith is simply a defeatist, resolution that this is case sarah sarah and whatever will be will be and then everybody applauds them for their faith thank you for your enthusiasm i had somebody i got in just about an argument with and i just had to shut up and walk away because i you know just I, I wanted to call him an idiot but i didn't that the sandy hook shootings god had a reason for it there's, it's, it's, in, it's somehow in the master plan of God. And the words idiot really got about right here. And I just had to shut up and just, uh, I couldn't argue with them. It's hard to argue with stupid. Yeah. It really is. God has, you know, and I did say, you know, I mean, we, 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 we hate the guy who did it. Everybody hates that guy. Are you here? He, got, he killed himself, right? And if he had lived, everybody would be screaming for the death penalty and ought to take him out back in and shoot him and then we turn around and say God had a reason for doing it. We have words for people who think like that. Schizophrenic comes to mind. Bipolar comes to mind. Or just plain out dumb. We think it's evil for the man to do it but God had a reason for doing it. How do you reconcile that? And then call it faith. We just have to trust he knows best. Have you ever read the 91st Psalm? He that abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Isn't that what it says? What? He that abides. He that abides. Isn't that right? See, we got a lot of people who are Christian. <laughs> They're Sinos. Or Chinos. Christian in name only. Ouch. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Now one of the problems is we can't talk about God in our schools anymore. Instead of when something's going on, the teachers start quoting the 91st Psalm and speaking faith over the kids that, that, that don't nobody know anything about God. And they get kicked out of school if they mention his name. In him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee. From the, why, did, why don't people get delivered? Because people don't believe he'll deliver them. From the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the air that flieth by day. We've we got one of the dumbest societies in the world right now. Some kid just got expelled for saying the word gun. He mentioned the word gun. <clears throat> Some kid was on a school bus a few months ago. This just came out. <clears throat> and he was talking about he wished he had a gun to protect everybody at school. Got a 10-day suspension. You can't figure out dumb. But the Bible says that, you know, when kids are afraid, why are they afraid? Because the only ones that got weapons and the only ones that get to do what they want to do with them are the, are the evil people because all the idiots take all the guns from those who know what they're doing. Can't even, you can't have them, can't bring a beat. Some college kids got arrested for bringing Nerf guns on, on campus and having a Nerf gun fight. This just happened. We can't talk about God. When you take God, that idiot takes over. I'm just telling you, idiot takes over. And they all sound intellectual. That's idiot. We should be teaching our children that God will cover them with his feathers and under his wings they can trust. His truth should be their shield and buckler. That they shouldn't be afraid of the terror by night nor the... Uh, uh, nor the air that flies by noon day, nor the pestilence, that's animal diseases, anthrax, which can be covered in that. They walk in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. If we taught our children, and our, listen, it starts with the parents who are out on the golf course or laying out in the sun instead of in church, getting taught the Word of God, and then going home and teaching their kids, or they're, they're out drinking wine and, and running up and down and leaving the kids off somewhere else, partying all the time instead of raising their children and bringing them up in the way, nurture and admonition of the Lord. You wonder why your children don't, don't your children turn out crazy because you, you, you raised them crazy. They didn't turn out serving God because you didn't raise them serving God. We should be telling our kids that a thousand will fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not. Come now be. Now how can you say that God killed kids when his word says if you'll trust him, that thing won't even come near you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. So that means destruction and pestilence and terror by night and errors that fly by the noonday and, and people falling on one hand and people falling on the other hand are the reward of the wicked. The church should be telling people that the reward of the righteous, of the good, those that are born of God, is it won't even come nigh your dwelling. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Your kids should go to school with the assurance that under his feathers, under his wings shalt thou trust. He's covering them with his feathers. And if it's around you, it won't come nigh you. You'll just get, you might see it, but it won't touch you. Those were innocent children. They would not have been innocent children that an evil society, an evil bunch of intellectuals, Rob them of the faith necessary to protect them. So the NEA and all the intellectualists and all the anti-God crowd is responsible for all this mess. Hello. Can't have faith in a school. God's been removed. Told him he can't, you can't pray to him. You're going to take him out of the Pledge of Allegiance. You can't talk about God. You can't pray at a commencement exercise. You can't pray at a football game unless it's student initiated. So the teachers have no rights. You tell God no, no, no. And then we get the consequences, and nobody likes the consequences. But you see, Satan took so many years to enforce. In, in, slowly insert this that people can't parallel they got generations don't even know anything about God coming up and came up in a godless school system I wouldn't, didn't, I wouldn't even think about that I didn't mean to get off on all that but listen verse 9 because thou hast made the Lord thy which is uh, 
my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, nor any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Because he, now listen, God says back to him, now because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will deliver him. Now, how do you reconcile this with God had a reason to kill him? Something in his master plan. He says, if you do these things, you're going to be delivered from it. He's not. The Bible does not say that, the, that God walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It says the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Come on now. God, God's not going around trying to devour people. As a matter of fact, he says, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto thee. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. As in terror, the Greek bears out. But we got people running around saying, God, see, you got to get in agreement with God. <coughs> Are you here? God's not going around killing all school kids. God didn't send F F5 tornadoes to wipe out whole cities. EF5s. The, El uh, the El Reno was just upgraded to an EF5. Widest in the history ever recorded. 2.6 miles wide. And we don't know where to go. Packing winds close, to, uh, 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 you know, between 215 and 300 miles an hour. God didn't send the other acts of God. Yeah, little G. And who the God of this world, not God himself, not the Father God. Somebody told me that was just a, that was just a terminology. Now the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. Because Adam sold it over and turned it over to him. We don't have time to do a whole authority of the believer thing. But Adam turned that, that authority over to Satan. And he became the God of this world. And he's been, he's been uh, you know, uh, uh, enforcing evil. And destruction since then. Hello? Elections. We, we give our elected officials authority at an election. You don't think an election means something? Are you here? Do you know that we've, that we've had two, two, let's see. We've had some of the most liberal justices appointed in the past 15 years in, in the courts you could even imagine pro-abortion, pro-gay rights. One of our justices doesn't even believe, but actually believes we should look at the international law to help, understand, to help make rule on our law. They were sworn in to faithfully defend the Constitution of the United States of America, not what the world thinks. Elections have consequences. What? When you vote for someone, you are granting them authority to do whatever they do. That went over big. It's not just, uh, you know, well, I, I, I like the guy. You better, we better get past liking people. We better get past, you know, you know uh, th this mindset is what's robbing people of faith. We're doing stuff because our flesh likes it. We make decisions in life. You know, think of a think hundred years ago. I, I actually, let's, let's forget that. Go back to Nixon and Kennedy. The Nixon-Kennedy debate. Everybody who heard, I mean, by far, the polls by short show it, Every, the, the, by far, those who listened to the debate on the radio said Nixon won hands down because of content. 
articulation-wise, knowledge-wise, whatever else, he, he blasted Kennedy. But because the television crowd that watched it, let's face it, Nixon wasn't that good-looking. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, the, the red-haired Irish Catholics from New England are good-looking. But it was black and white, so you couldn't tell he had red hair. You know, but they, they thought Nick, they thought Kennedy was debonair and he was, he was good looking. You know, how many remember when John Edwards was all being groomed to run for president? They were kind of trying to make him look Kennedy-esque. They were joking him, you know, and he was handpicked and groomed to run. That's how he became senator. They, they, they were grooming him to become president. He just couldn't stay out of bed with other women. Anyway. Kennedy couldn't either, but nobody knew about it back then. Kennedy won and won the presidency because of image. And we have been trained since then, since 1962, the past 51 years, to be governed by what we see. Now you can't, don't tell me that's not the spirit of Antichrist. Because the Bible says we're to be governed by what we cannot see. We're to be governed by a faith in God's word. See, this, 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 that, that was not a mistake. You've got to understand, there are, there are demonic, there are there, there's, there's, uh, rulers, princes, gosh, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world, powers and wicked, prince, 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 wicked principalities and powers in, in heavenly places. I'm not on the good tongues, hallelujah. Glory to God. Spiritual wickedness in high places. See, the church has forgotten that when the prophet set himself to a fast, or Daniel set himself to a fast, that the angel said, I was sent the first day you prayed, but the prince of, I believe, Persia withstood me. There are evil spirits working over nations to enforce Satan's desire. We better get thinking about like how God thinks when we start voting for people because if they're working in harmony with the evil spirit Satan has sent to our nation to bring it down and to destroy it, they're going to have to answer to God for voting for people who, 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 who work that way. Since 62, or 60, actually 1960, the 60 debates, <clears throat> television has become the main... Now, we don't, we don't ever know what people really believe. We get little snippets. We get the little news cycles. And so, and so everybody who runs for office now plays to that snip, that little snippet, that little bitty news cycle thing. That statement they can make, that can, everybody can, you know, forward... What does that mean? Come on now. Everybody comes up with some kind of campaign slogan. But what does it mean? How about tell me how we're going to go forward? Tell me how we're going to afford another trillion dollars in debt as a nation. But because we can image people. And they, this, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, you think I have diverted off my subject. I have not. I'm trying to make a point using the political arena that we're living in right now because it is a representation of where people are in their thinking in our country now. We are so driven by imagery that it is destroying the faith of the church. When you go to the store to buy something, how, how many of you ever gone to get suntan lotion? And on one rack, they got Hawaiian Tropic with the cool guy with his hat on there and the, the, all the fancy logo on there. And then right beside it, you got no ad. It's a plain bottle with the word no ad on it. Got the same stuff in it, but it don't have the cool guy on the front. Are you here? You're going home. Are y'all with me? 
and, and it's half the price. And people reach over to pick up Mr. Cool-looking guy on the, on, the, on the thing because he's cool-looking. We'll buy, we'll, we'll buy TV dinners. You know, I mean, maybe you don't, but you know, you'll buy food in the store. And they'll put these sharp pictures of that food looks like it. I mean, it's home-cooked. Homemade. I mean, it looks like, ooh, I mean, glory to God, mama's home cooking. And so you buy it into one of the little BB garden peas. Are you here? The fried chicken is a soggy. I mean, it's, it's just soggy. But, they, but what? They use imagery. We use imagery on television. We use sex on television. Everything is about imagery. We're catering to the flesh, and we're training with the flesh. And we're, everything's about training to the flesh, training to the flesh, training to the flesh. Why? To rob you of faith. When we are to come to the point where, where we, we say, but God's word says. And now even our church, and I'm not, you know, we're, 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 I'm all, I understand some things you got to do and, and attract people or whatever. But man, if you don't have a cool haircut and a cool backdrop with, with 14 televisions doing all kinds of cool stuff, you know, you're boring. You can have the most, now the guy who's doing all that could be preaching, you know, God's going to kill you and send you to hell, but trust him while he does it, and they'll go. And you can have us, and I guess we look traditional, I'm being told we're traditional, we're going to change. Okay, where we look like we're from the 20s. You know, no, that's not what anybody said. This is the 90s. Preach a word that will set the captive free. Uh, that's boring over there because you don't have all the cool graphic stuff going on. Now, I understand in order to play catch up with people, you've got to do certain things, and, you know, and we're working at it. Go check out our new youth wall over there. I understand that. But that's not where we should be. That is, that is, this is a result of Satan's attack on, on people for decades. Now, okay, so we, maybe we back up and do whatever we got to do to get their attention, but then we still, we have got to preach the word. And here's what churches are doing a lot of times, is they're, they're, they're lowering the standard and not preaching the word and doing all the cool stuff, but they're not preaching the word. We're going, we, we may have to do some cool stuff, but we're going to preach the word. I'm going to get me a new, I'm going, I'm going to get me a, uh, the bird from, you know, the guy from the Miami Heat. Okay, he's got the mohawk and shade on the sides, the tat tatted all up to here and gauges and stuff, you know. I'm, I'm going to come in gauged up, and tatted up, and spiked up. We're going to reach everybody. <laughs> Not everybody. Might lose Brother Bill on that one. That's too far, Pastor. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We, we get some, we get some, anyway. What I'm saying is, Satan's been at work to get people to, and we and our churches, we have homosexual churches. Metropolitan community churches are the LGBT churches, and they're not churches. They are not of God. They are not ordained of God. The Spirit of God is not there blessing them. The Spirit of God did not call them. They are a lie. They are Ichabod of their doors, and they're deceiving people. And I don't really care. You write me a letter. I don't care. I'll tell you the same thing to your face. It's not of God. But we've, got, we've been trained to bring God's standards down in all arenas. And then yet we're, we believe we can step to the, up to the plate and act in faith in a crisis. When we haven't pleased him or, see, I told you I hadn't lost where I was. Come into agreement with him in accordance with his word. We have to be in harmony with the word of God. I mean, you know, we got, we got people running around talking about all the, the crazy grace stuff and, and how they can live any way they want to live and God's still going to bless them. That's just the spirit of Antichrist perverting the message of grace. It's a perversion of the message of grace. Grace was never intended to allow you to continue doing what God told you not to do. Grace was intended 
to deliver you from doing what God told you not to do and to bring you into a place where you walk into harmony with him. Amen. Empowering grace, strengthening grace, ministry grace was designed to bring you out, not keep you there. In other words, God doesn't lower his standards. So if you're going to please God, you're going to have to come to where his ways are higher than your ways. Now, the, now I said all that. The beautiful thing about it is, like God said, or quoted earlier, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto thee, says the Lord. What's that mean? You come to God in faith and God will meet you and God will strengthen you and God will empower you. Remember he said this, he said that there is no temptation taking man but such taking you, but such as common to man, that he will with the temptation make a means of escape. What's that mean? If you turn to him, he will empower you to overcome. You don't lay down and say he doesn't care that I'm doing it and, and, and indulge in it, whatever it is, smoking dope, drinking, shooting up, carousing, robbing, murdering, raping, whatever it is. Grace did not empower you, uh, did not come to appease you with a feel-good, pat-on-the-back, Barney song of I love you and you love me, we're one big happy family with baby bop. Jesus did not come to leave you the way he found you. He came to raise you up, to tear down the wall of enmity between God and man, to reconcile man unto himself, and to deliver him from his destruction. And somebody say glory. Glory. But the conditions of that deliverance are the condition of faith, of agreeing with God, of pleasing God, by living by faith, of coming into agreement with Him, and coming up. I was, um, this, I, I was on a blog the other day, one of my, my friend, that guy done it, got into this discussion with, with some of the, you come up with people, you think, how could they be so warped in their thinking? This, and he said, so if a man rapes, we were talking about, you know, that, that God doesn't hold anything against us and that whatever. We just, we need to tell people who they are, what they've received in Christ, and not ever talk about what they've done wrong because that keeps them in captivity. So he says, so it's wrong for us to, to do something about somebody who rapes a woman and violates her. And the guy says, no, we, we should tell them that, you know, who, the, who they are and what God's done for them and never talk about what they did. That, because when you talk about what they did, you keep them bound by what they did. We don't ever do it. People get crazy with this stuff. Instead of repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand, are you here? The disciples, Jesus told the disciples, and they went out and told everybody, repent. Repent and be baptized. Peter, one of Peter's first sermons, maybe second or third sermon, he said, repent and be baptized, everyone even in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you and your house will be saved. Repent. What do I mean? You've got, to, you've got to walk away from a way where you do things the way you think it should be done and submit yourself to what God says about it. And what God says about it is the way you're to walk and believe and talk and not do it your way. Now let me say something. When it comes to dealing with sin, God's way is not, it don't matter. God's way is stop. I will give you the grace or the empowerment to stop, but that is still an act of faith. By grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. The grace still has to be applied through faith. You've got to come in agreement with God. Amen? So we need to hear what God's Word says about matters. I, I know I'm, I've been all over the map. But it's really, I, I just kind of went around the block. Kicked in a couple of 
doors while we were going around the block. Threw some people out in the front yard and said, straighten up. Amen. Kicked a couple people in the seat of the pants. See, many people want the blessings and fellowship of God without being in agreement with Him and His Word. There are people who believe they're going to prosper, but not tithe or give. I have people sit in the church and tell me, I don't believe in tithing. Really? That's Old Testament. Man. Can I have, can I have a pair of scissors? Because I need to cut Hebrews out and move it back before Matthew. Because there's a lot said in Hebrews about tithing. As a matter of fact, talking about God says, there he receiveth them. Y'all hear you going home? Who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Receiveth. Didn't say received in past tense. Receiveth present tense. He's still receiving the tithe. I don't believe in tithing. Now, you old stingy rascal. That's not one of them private revelations where you don't have to do what the Bible says. And you think you're going to get blessed. See, it doesn't work that way. Amen? Matter of fact, God calls it robbery. He, in, in Malachi, he called it robbery not to bring the tithing offering into the storehouse. Amen? People want, you know, there are people who want the blessing of healing. Without judging themselves, according to 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one, we talked about that Sunday night when we were receiving the Lord's table. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But you know what that also means? If we don't judge ourselves, we will be judged. Well, God don't judge anybody. Where'd you get that from, Mister Feelgood Preacher? See, I, I believe yes. The Bible. We should preach the Bible. We shouldn't preach people and tell them that God's going to burn them and, and, and turn them and burn them and send them to hell all the time. But there's another side of this. If you want, I'm, I'm telling you how to get to the place of victory. What? Come into agreement with God said. Simple. Do it the way God said. Do it. It's just so hard. Living defeated is not harder. Living under captivity and bondage isn't harder? Come on now. Most people's problems would vanish if they would just come into agreement with what God's Word says. His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The entrance of His Word gives light. He gives understanding. Listen to this, to the simple. Man, I'm going to tell you, it's like these guys used to come tell Dad Hagen, you know, these, these doctors and lawyers, say, we love it, Brother Hagen. You just make it simple. Even, us, like, even people like us can understand it. Why? Because spiritual matters aren't understood with the mind anyway. So you can have a lot of intellectual understanding. It's like, you know, there's, there's a, a whole series of Greek study done by a, a, a guy, and he's well-known, and he's got his own translation. A year, he's older, but it's been, it's been out for a number of years. <clears throat> but he does a lot of study on the Greek and stuff. He still calls the Christian the believing sinner, and that Bible don't even do that. The Bible doesn't call you the believing sinner. And so how can you have all that education? Have, because you can get educated beyond your intelligence for one thing. Hello? Just because you can read a certain language don't make you an authority on spiritual matters in that what's being said. Amen. Isn't that right, Dr. Bill? Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, the lawyers and doctors and Pharisees of the law, when, when, and, and, and all those guys, when they called Peter and John, and they, and they preached the faith, and they preached the word of God, and they preached under the anointing, took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. And those ignorant and unlearned men wrote part of the Bible. Well, that went over real good. Hallelujah. Amen. The word, if you'll come, if you'll, if you'll act in accordance with the word, you'll come into agreement with God. Because God, God doesn't disagree with this word. Amen. Amen.